I often get asked about the topic of sex and when to have the big talk. But really, it's not about having one big talk. It's about a series of talks that start at the very, very beginning. Before our kids are self-conscious and before things start happening to them. Way, way, way before. And it really is our accessibility and our comfort with the topic that is so important. Because let's be honest, if we are not feeling good about this, if we are feeling discomfort or shame or embarrassment, your kids are going to pick up on that. And they're going to wonder why this is a topic that causes so much angst in my parents. And so really, yeah, I'm sure you, when you think back to how you were told or taught or not taught, there might be some really genuine trauma um, and so really it's up to us to prevent and stop transgenerational trauma going forward and to acknowledge that it may not have been great for us, but we can do better and our kids deserve better. And so it's starting at the very beginning. You're showing your two-year-old the two snails that are making snail babies and not telling blatant lies. Mommy cow is not giving daddy cow a piggyback. The kids really, really, we owe it to them to give them the facts and to give it to them in age-appropriate step-by-step processes. So this is a topic that starts at the very, very beginning and not when you wait and walk into your teenager's room to give them the talk and they say, Dad, you know, I've heard it all. That's too, that's like 10 years too late. Um, and so step one, when it comes to the topic of sex and talking to kids, it's about addressing your own discomfort of the topic first. And number two, it is it's about using those daily opportunities of the mating dogs or the conversation or kissing or um, sanitary towels. Use everyday moments to have these discussions with your kids so that they know this is a topic that you are accessible and happy to talk about. Because in the absence of information, your child will go looking for information or they will be shown and you want to get to your kid before the rest of the world gets to your kid. So it really is our duty to prepare them. Um, and step three would be use the correct terminology for genitals. Let's stop with the nicknames. And, you know, step four would also be not leaving the puberty talk too late. If you're waiting to see changes in your kid's body before you start telling them about it, you're kind of two years too late because that hypothalamus has been releasing hormones for two years before you see anything of the body change. And so the kids need to know before it happens what is happening to them. And so it really is. It's our duty to give them this information and to show them this is a topic that we can talk about. So they do come to you. You are their go-to person. And when they ask difficult questions, we have to say, I'm so thankful you came to ask me that. That is such a brilliant question. Let me think about it because I really do want to give you the right information. And if you find it difficult, buy books. Don't buy one, buy five books. And don't just leave them lying around so your kid happens to come across them. Read them to them. These are all the ways that we can build really strong relationships and open lines of dialogue because your greatest line of defense, it's not a security app on your phone. It's having open discussions with your kids. Your greatest line of defense is having a really good relationship.